Welcome to COUK Radio. This is our first show and we are very honoured to have a special guest for our pilot episode. Before we get to our guest list, I want to give a quick shout out to a few friends of COUK and a matter that's been uh, bothering us the last couple of days. This radio show was initially set up to be done for Real Combat Media. We arranged the interview for Friday evening to record for the radio show. However, Friday I received a message from my contact at Real Combat Media to say that he's resigned as editor and that somebody would be in touch um, regarding how to do upload our show to their YouTube channel etc. So me and John decided we'll give him 24 hours to get in touch before we decide what we're going to do. The 24 hours come and went and between us we decided we've got the interview you know, we've got the show, we've got the accessory to do it and put it on YouTube. So we've decided to keep the show for ourselves. Yesterday, I got a very moody message from the guy that was quite rude, who's running uh, Real Combat Media. I exchanged messages. I didn't say anything bad to the guy. And it's turned out today that he's told us that if he does not receive this interview, he's going to start putting bad things in the press about us. Um, I'm sure anybody that knows us and who's listening to this knows that we put all our effort, all our money into making CAUK what it is. The radio is just an extra addition so we can chat to people where they may live too far or, you know, it costs a lot of money travelling, time for editing. So me and John have decided that CAUK radio will be the way forward so we can catch up with you guys when we can't get up to film you. Enough of that. The guy's you know, sent some really stupid messages which we're not going to get involved in. So let's continue with the show. We've got a great guest, but before I get to him, I'd just like to give a shout out to some of our friends. The first one is Tony Moran. Thank you for giving us that great uh, interview with Charlie Bronson. Next one's for former UFC fighter Ollie Thompson. Ollie's fighting at CSMMA. He's uh, away from the UFC for a little bit. He's going to come back, get some more experience. And hopefully Ollie will go back to the UFC, all guns blazing. Lenny Scudder, great friend of mine, won his second pro fight and is now the champion on Tolly's show. Nick Chapman and Dom Clark, great, good friends again. Both going back to UCMMA on December, I believe it's beginning of December. Um, Dom Clark's one of them fighters, unfortunately, that record does not reflect the fighter he is. Nigel the Pitbull Whittier really good friend of ours. He's just recently won at Fight Science Gym on the 6th of October. He's got another title. Jake Boswick, another friend. He won his fight at UCMMA. Darren Trowler, another guy on our site. Beat a local guy to us, Damon Lake. Unlucky Damon. Hope to see you in the cage again soon. Louis Cao King. What a great fighter this guy is. I heard that on his debut he, he stumbled a bit but he soon got back and he won by TKO in round one. Tommy King, brother of Louis, obviously. I put a lot of faith in these two guys, to be honest. I mean, I really believe that any all the guys on the circuit, I really think these two brothers are going to go. And Tommy King beat Chase Morton. Again, another great fight. Another friend of ours, Paul Kingdon. Unfortunately, he lost his fight uh, by TKO in round one. Jimmy Justice Miller. Everybody knows this guy. Nice guy. Um, I think maybe sometimes he'd be suited more to the WWE, the way he is. But again, what a great fighter. Unlucky, Jimmy. And I just want a uh, special mention to Tomaz. Now, Tomaz lost his K1 fight, but in the build-up to the fight, uh, he had some bad news re- regarding the, ch- uh, the mother of his child. Everybody knows Tomaz does not walk away from fights. He's got, he's, a, he's got three matches, rematches coming up. He didn't have to give rematches. Um, but he's respectful enough to give all the guys, Hawkins, Mills and Paul Saunders, another friend of ours, the rematch that they deserve. And Tom has told me he would do the same again because he's a respectful fighter. Tom has, if you're listening, buddy, good luck and I can't wait to see you and Hawkins at Fury. Um, anyone who wants to appear on our show, obviously just get in touch with me or John. And now on to the main part of the show, the B-Bad Andy Topliff interview. Please carry on listening, guys, because at the end of the show, we're going to give a plug to all the UK shows that are coming up in the next month to six weeks. Today's guest is Andy Topliff. He's the promoter of B-Bad. He's a bare-knuckle fighter. It's not been easy for him getting the show together, but all guns blazing. We're on for October the 27th. Andy, welcome to the show. Hi, mate. You all right? 
Oh, I'm good, mate. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, brother. Not too bad. Brilliant. So basically, we want to find out a bit about you, Andy. If you could tell us a bit about where you grew up and your childhood and all that sort of thing. Yeah, mate. Uh, to be honest with you, I had a bit of a, a bit of a funny childhood, if you know what I mean. I was brought up. Uh, my father was a traveller. My mother was, uh, you know, a house dweller. And obviously, you know, because of that, there was a lot of co- uh, confrontation with both sides. So I was often fighting and getting into trouble and, and what have you. And then I got sent to uh, boarding school. Uh, I think it was funded by the government. And, and obviously there, I learned, you know, I, le- I learned basically how to stand up for myself pretty quick, like. And basically, you know, I, I was just fascinated from then. I was hooked, I suppose, you know, to see him come back and they was all blooded. And, you know, I'd, I'd listen to the stories and, and I'd see the amount of respect they used to earn. And, uh, and I think, you know, I think that it was just in my blood then after that. So you, was you, would you say you, was, you lived the more of the traveller style of life then, as opposed to the gorger, as travellers would call us? Yeah, um, yeah, basically, we wouldn't necessarily call it a gorger, call it, a, you know, like a, a ken, a, ken a, a house dweller. House yep. dweller like ken. But um, no, not really. To be honest with you, at the moment, um, I live in a house, as, as a lot of, uh, of travellers seem to be doing now, more and more. But uh, you know, I've still got I've still got good strong ties on the side. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't really ever I'd never really think about it if you know what I mean. I just I just am what I am. Uh, if people don't like me, they can go and do one. If they like me, that's all. <laughs> that's all I really give a fuck about. <laughs> So that's that's like your sort of childhood. So when you were sort of sixteen, seventeen, what did you go to work or was you what was you doing for a teenage yeah, years? When I was a young lad, I used to uh, I, I actually went to college and I went I did an arboriculture course, you know, tree topping and going up the trees and what have you. And uh, I did a lot of tarmacking, driveways, you know, things like that. And then uh, and then to be honest with you, I kind of got myself into a little bit of trouble, I suppose. You know, I uh, I ended up in a in a, a yacht. Young Offenders Institute, that was there, Glen Parva, and did a boxing program there, which was, uh, it was fantastic, to be honest with you, it gave me a bit of discipline, and then I think it was about 18 when I had my first fight, uh, I went down to Maidstone in Kent, uh, I went to go and live, you know, live down there with my father, I was too much for my mother, and she couldn't handle me, and I was, you know, living from, living from place to place, and I was, you know, going from site to site, and all the rest of it, and then uh, my father took me, in a, you know, over Maidstone, and yeah, to be honest with you, that's that's where I first got into my bit, you know, into my BKB. So that was bare knuckle, yeah. That wasn't gloves. Yeah, that was bare knuckle. So that's what I was going to ask. So that that was really the next question was when did you first get into that? So that would have been about that time then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The first, the very first fight I had, it was uh, it was a brilliant fight actually. Well, it wasn't. It, it was a brilliant fight for me, and it wasn't a very good fight for him. If you know what I mean? Basically, I think it lasted about two minutes, and. The mush, you know, he, he kept calling me out and all the rest of it, uh, saying that I was, you know, just saying that I was basically uh, shit, you know, couldn't couldn't find my way out of a toffee bag. I went up and I met up with him. And, it, and obviously in those days, fights, the, the, not how I'm trying to get it now. It was more kind of, you know, you would meet up, you'd arrange your time, you'd remain, arrange your place, and your mates would go and his mates would go. And then you're, all, all the lads would say, your actual personal friends, they would stay kind of, you know, stay, you know, at, at, at home or at a site, and then you would have one of your friends, and they would go with you, and he would have one of his friends, and he would go with him, and then you'd have people who know you, and then you just fought, you know. So, so, so that's so. How many fights have you had now, Andy? Undefeated. You know what? I, I I've always said I've had 42 fights. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I, I, know, I certainly know it's over 39, and I was talking to a good mate of mine, and we tried to work it out, and we we actually got the same days and like the people and what have you, and the reckon is about 40, between 40 and 42 fights. That's a lot then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would have been a lot more, but unfortunately, I had a, a very bad, uh, you know, something quite bad happened to me, and uh, I actually, it got knocked on the head very quickly. Right. Okay. So you're not fighting anymore. No, mate. No. Although I was saying that though, I did have a, I did have a fight about, about a month ago. No, no. One. Sorry. About three months ago. Right. That was your last fight, then, yeah. Yeah, it was, mate. So now was, all your fighting uh, energy, is, all your fighting energy is going to go into be bad now, then, yeah. Yeah. Into no. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not really uh, out to fight anyone anymore. Uh, I just want to. You know. I want other. I want. I want to help other fighters basically uh, become, you know, become safe. I want to, you know, so it's a safe environment. Uh, 
and I want it mainstream. That's that's my big dream is to is to make it mainstream so that they you know that there's somewhere where they can go and fight, and they're not going to go on you know they're not going to get themselves into trouble basically. No, no, that's brilliant. I mean, it's it brings it safer I suppose as well, doesn't it? Rather if it's legal, you know, the authorities so to speak can keep an eye on what's going on more than they would if it was illegal. It, 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 it's basically, it's just a load of, it, I'm sorry for saying it in these words, but it's just a load of fucking bollocks. Uh, sorry for swearing, uh, but right. it really gets, it gets on my nerves, mate. You know, you, you've got Muay Thai sanctions, you've got MMA sanctions, you know, you've got all these different forms of fighting sanctions. And, you know, some of these sports, you can kick a man in the face um, with a bare foot, you know, you can elbow, you can knee. You know, you can do all these different things. You can choke a man out until he, he he's not out. Why on earth wouldn't you? Um, what, why on earth would there be any any reason why a sport can't be sanctioned just for using your two fists? You know, if you're if you're using your two fists, as long as there's a good referee there and you haven't got necessarily novices in there fighting, you've got people who know what they're doing. I'm sorry, that to me is, is a lot safer. Um, than a lot of sports out there at the moment. Yeah, I think a lot. Some people would agree um, with you there yeah. as well, Andy. Um, see, like um, when you, we, we see the bare knuckle fights on the internet, like for our example, the documentary Knuckle, we see yeah. them fighting and they've got two referees there. They've got one from each, <coughs> each side. Yeah, it seems very fair. That sometimes seems a lot fairer than other fight situations. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would, mate. Um, to be honest with you, that's how I always used to fight. Uh, until we, until I set up Field Rage um, in the, you know, like uh, early 2000s, um, that, like I said in the conversation a minute ago, you know, I would have, you know, I would bring one friend with me, and he would be my referee, so he was watching my back, and then the, and then my opponent would bring a, a man, and then he would watch his back. And the reason why you did that is so that in the crowd, you know, you didn't have, it, there was no way of, um, you know, crowd fighting and what have you. You just have one guy who knows you and he has one guy who knows him. Yeah. And then basically you'll have obviously people watching, but usually they're respected people on the site and they were elders. Yeah. You know? So no one no one would double question what they, they would say, basically. Well, at the end of the day, your man's looking out for you yeah. and his man's looking out for him. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if it's your friend, he's always going to look out for you to make sure that you're all right. Do you know what I mean? And obviously the same as his his a judge is going to do the same. It's completely, it's, it's very alien, really, compared to boxing, uh, to, to actually be refereed in that way. But in actual fact, sometimes I put a lot of thought into it, and, it, and it, it actually could be the most safest way of ever refereeing a fight. Because the fighter then has always got someone on his side, and that other fighter's got someone on his side, so that way you can never get a biased referee. No, we see that, um, you know, sometimes in MMA and stuff like that, stoppages that sometimes, you know, oh, may God. be the wrong decision. So with two. Yeah. Um, right, before we move on to B-Bad, um, I've got a yeah. question from one from a lady called Tammy Lala Bowers. Do you know this uh, lady? Oh, Tammy. She says, how did it feel being arrested and held by the police for trying to organise an event? And how did the police respond to you when you was there? To be honest with you, mate, uh, it was quite surprising. Um, I was, I really was expecting, you know, uh, to get a lot of shit over it, and uh, and probably to go, you know, I really had no idea what was going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, but to be to be fair, they they was all right. I think really they just wanted to know what was going on. To make they instead of trying to scare me off because they know what kind of bloke I am. You know, I've had many dealings in the past, you know, as, as a youngster and, and all the rest of it. And I suppose I have a bit of a reputation anyway. You know, doing what I want to do when I want to do it. But uh, no, I think it, if anything, they were they they were more more interested in trying to work with us so that it's it's not made underground. You know, I I gave my point across to them. I let them know, you know, exactly where we want to go and the reason why we're doing it. If anything, it was very positive. You know, it, it was it was more positive than not because you know they they were they were actually more keen in trying to help me get it sanctioned, they were giving me advice, you know, and blah, blah, and which I was completely shocked about. And to be honest with you, even a couple of them, you know, were actually saying, well, you know, we like MMA, to be honest with you, you know, you know, uh, and and it was like that. Did you offer them a couple of free tickets? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about that, like, you know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> maybe one day, eh? Yeah. 
if, 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 the day I can throw uh, free tickets to uh, uh, to the Muslims, uh, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, briefly on, mate. Um, so B Bad, what first gave you the idea to come up like B Bad? Um, of the name of the show and obviously the group on Facebook. Can you tell us a bit about where B Bad was born? To be honest with you, B Bad, uh, bare knuckles, broken knuckles, and dust up. Right. It's just what I see, bare, uh, bare knuckle, you know, boxing. And I, I basically see, you know, the way bare knuckle used to be, uh, you was always guaranteed, absolutely guaranteed. Whenever I, whenever I ever used to speak to a man and he'd say he was a bare knuckle boxer or, or even if he was a bare knuckle boxer and I was about to fight him, the first thing I would ever look at was his knuckles. And if you look at a man's knuckles, and you can usually tell straight away if they're sloggers or if they're, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, light jabs. Do you know what I mean? So that, in other words, they, they'll maybe go more for the body or if they were going to hit you in the head, you know, they don't like the pain in the knuckles. Then you look at some men, and if their knuckles are completely smashed up, know that you're going to have a good fight because that man there is not scared to punch you hard. You understand? He's not scared to break his knuckles on your end. That's when you've got to be a bit worried about a fighter. So, have you fought many men like that then? I have, yeah. Yeah, I've had a, I've had a, I've had a couple of fights with uh, some very hard men. You know, yeah. What's the longest one of your fights has ever lasted? The longest fight I ever had was... Um, you know, not not particularly very long actually. I was, I, I think it was about 35 minutes. All right, so still it is still a long time in terms of fighting a man for 35 minutes. It's... Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, um, and I'm certainly not blaming you for something um, at all because I'm not like that uh, at all either. But when I was when I used to do it, I used to be, I I used to be pretty good. If you know what I mean? Um, I, I had a natural talent of uh, just knocking them out. Right, so the, shot, the fights didn't last, only lasted till you finished them then, yeah, with the knockout. Um, I've got another question now from another another guest who wanted to ask something. His name's Alex France Fight. He's from France, obviously. Yeah. Um, he said, please can you tell him about the BKB League you're trying to set up, as he's an MMA and he's interested to see how the league would work. At the moment, it, it's really it's in its it's in, it's in its like new stage. What we're trying to do at the moment, we're trying to build enough fight so we can actually have a proper league. For this after the 27th, we do believe that we we definitely have enough people. You know, basically uh, a no a no bad hold. Once I would say really after the February fight, we're hoping that we've got enough fighters in the different weight categories that we can basically then make different, which is. It's basically the Silverado League. We've got three different categories which have rolled down. Um, we've we've got basically it's a bit like we've got a heavyweight, we've got a middleweight, and then we've got um, a league where any weight, if they're if they're good enough to do it, then you know, then then why not let them do it? Good answer. I think he's he said he's quite interested in BK, but I think over time maybe a lot of people will start having the same opinion. Yeah. Um. Next question is from George McCann. He's the editor at Love to Fight magazine. And he asks, what, um, why do you think BKB is not accepted by the public, yet other, other combat sports like MMA, boxing, judo why, are? Why do you think it's not accepted? There's a very, very good answer to this. And I mean a very good answer. And that's because nobody, and I mean nobody yet, has tried to get it made stream. Before cage fighting, right, went mainstream, people would have laughed their socks off if you told them in this country that you could get two men, right, kneeing each other, putting people out to sleep, you know, bashing shit out of each other, kicking them in the face, jumping on their heads with their knees. The problem is with bare knuckle boxing, it has always had a kind of a kind of stigma attached to it. To get the lads in the pub, you know, if, if they ever heard anything, it was like always somebody knew a bare knuckle fighter, even if they didn't. And it, and and to be honest with you, when it actually did happen, because MMA had the advantage of being a martial art, and I think the fact it had martial art in the name. Just as simple as that, add martial art in the name, I think that's really why it was cut as more acceptable. That was how you would go about it. If, if you was going to do knuckle fighting, that is the only that really was the only way to do it. And they went along with it. 
in their heads thinking that it's martial artists fighting. I think what it is with BKB, um, it's got a lot of prejudice uh, against uh, from the boxing community uh, for a simple reason. They like boxing. You know, they, they think it's silly not to fight with gloves. Well, we think the opposite. You know, we, we think actually it's a lot more safer to fight with your two knuckles than it is to fight with gloves. That's only our opinion and that's only our opinion. Yeah. But I think on the whole, uh, bare, knuckle, bare knuckle boxing has got such a bad reputation for no reason at all. The only reason is because no one has actually gone out and actually explained to the people what it's about and, and, and you know, uh, and tried to get it mainstream. Good answer, Andy. Um, I hope that answers George's question. Um, Peter Montgomery, a friend of yours. Do you know Peter? I do know Peter, yeah. Um, is, this is a good question, actually. He said, if you could pick a fighter from any era to fight, who would you choose? In my time, when I used to be a fighter, I would say um, I would have loved. I would have loved to have got. I personally would have loved to have had a about with someone like Dan Rooney, um, or maybe. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you'd love to, you'd love to see what it was like to fight Sullivan and people like that. But, uh, but realistically, um, you know, if you, if you, when you watch things, I think I'd have liked to have fought someone like Dan Rooney. Uh, I certainly know when I was a young lad, I would have loved to, have, you know, if, if that opportunity had arose, then I'm sure I would have, because I got so much respect for the man. I, I think Dan Rooney, um, he did so much for BKB, and he's not recognised enough, and he should be recognised a lot more because he's, a, he's a. He's now a Christian man, but in his day, he was a very, very tough man. Very tough man, and he had an awful lot of respect uh, as a BKB fighter. There's, another, yeah. there's a James Quinn promotion, um, and I've noticed they're doing a sanctioning body as well for BKB. Is this going to be a similar to yours, the sanctioning body you're organising, or is it going to be like two separate organisations? I'll, I'll be honest with you, mate. Um, the what. Anyone who, anyone who knows me and anyone who knows the crew, what runs be bad, we're always glad to work with anybody. We, we've never once ever got involved in bickering, battles or um, arguments or basically thinking that, you know, you own the sport and all this. No. As far as I'm concerned, BKB doesn't belong to anybody. All right? It doesn't belong to anybody. And the more people get together, the better. As far as I'm concerned, I wish all the luck in the world uh, if James can get this sanction, and even if we can get it sanctioned as well, you know, however it pans out, it's great as far as I'm concerned. I just want BKB to work. That's all I want. And and then at the end of the day, if James uh, gets his sanctions, and there could even be a possibility B Bad would 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 actually fight underneath his sanctioning rules. You know, at the end of the day, it wouldn't stop me from promoting fights. I'd still do it. And um, and at the moment, you know, we're quite confident that we're going to get it sanctioned. And if we do, that's fantastic as well. So as far as I'm concerned, whoever gets it sanctioned, grand. And, and you can also have more than one sanctioning body. You've got an UFC and you've got an yeah. MMA. You know, you know, you can have lots of... The more sanctioning bodies, again, even better. It gives, some, uh, it, gives, it gives people a choice on who to fight for, slightly different rules and things like that. It's all good. And... Uh, I know James personally, and he's a really nice bloke, very, very nice man. Um, you know, he'll, it, you can sit down, you can have a chat with him. It, it's not all like me, me, me. He's quite prepared to sit down and, and have a chat. And, and that's how it should be. Uh, I think the most keyest thing in all of this is, is that everybody has to start sticking together and everybody has to see that we're all looking at that same light. And if we can, uh, if we can all move towards that light, then we, we're a stronger force. You know. I think that's definitely the the main point. If everyone's heading in the right direction, that's the uh, that's good for the sport. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right, mate. Uh, you, uh, how do you pick your fighters, Andy, for the shows? Um, is it sort of by recommendation through <clears throat> through the circuit, or? To be honest with you, it's usually word of mouth um, or Facebook. Yep. Um, now, when I used to do, uh, it, it, it's a bit strange, really. Th this time round, um, you've got to remember. I, I used, I, I've been organising fights now for over 15 years, and uh, and, and I, I was actually organising fights even when I was a fighter myself, and we started up Field Rage uh, down in Maidstone in Kent, 
and uh, another promoter was kind of tabbed onto that, and it, and it was brilliant. You know, we, there was about uh, four or five different people doing it all over the country, and it was fantastic. I think at the end of the day, as long as as long as people uh, all stick together, same thing in mind. That's all that matters, mate. To be honest with you. Some good fighters on the show, Andy. Um, I've been chatting to a couple of them. You got the main event, Andy, Andy Power Hill House. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, yeah. Carl Lightning. What's his surname? <laughs> yeah, Carl Thompson. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, now now Carl is an interesting guy. Um, he's uh, he's, he's uh, he he loses a lot of weight to Andy, um, but he's uh, he he's he's the only guy I know who's actually um, who's actually created his own form of Wing Chun, and it, and it's actually being recognised. Um, and it's called Lightning Fist. Um, he I've heard in the grapevine he's an extremely very very uh, talented fighter. He's doing you know a bit of bodyguarding for you know, certain people, and um, I'm sure he'll do well. Now, Andy Ilhouse, as we all know, um, the guy, the guy's, a, <laughs> to me anyway, I, I love the guy. He's a, he's a legend in my life. I think BKB is the perfect sport for Andy. Um, I know he's, I know in the past uh, he's, uh, you know, he's had, his, he's had his problems and what have you, with Apple, but toe-to-toe, I think Andy is a is a giant, and he, he's going to be a giant in the sport of BKB. So uh, my 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 uh, opinion is uh, keep an eye out for Andy. No fear, Hill House, because I'm pretty sure you know he's one to watch in the future. Yeah, I see. He's doing some films or something at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Although you'd have to ask him about that. <laughs> Um, and I got a question. I was chatting to my dad earlier about about you, and he wanted to ask the question: Who's hit you the hardest in your fight career? Who's hit me the hardest? He was a Nigerian man. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, all I know is his name was Ali Baju. A lot of the fighters who, who I fought were um, on field rage. Right. And uh, at the time, you just wouldn't. Uh, you got it. And you knew the names at the time, and yep. you'd fight them and all this, but that's about it. This guy, nice, big Nigerian guy, Jesus Christ, you know, he, he, he cracked me, he cracked me when I tell you what, he, he made me really uh, <laughs> have to stand back and, you know, get talk myself <laughs> out. I thought, you're not hitting me on that same spot again now. <laughs> you know, I kept my hand there all the time. Any, there's going to be some, like, some sort of celebrity guests at the uh, show, is that right? There is, mate, but I'm too much of a gentleman, uh, really. I don't think it would be fair, necessarily, to, to say their names on a radio show without obviously asking their permission. No, but, no problem. But I, I'll tell you now, um, they're very interesting names. And uh, and uh, and then, obviously, once it's all filmed and stuff, I do know that they will, uh, they're will. they all happy to be on camera and, and what have you. So check out the DVD is all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we're going to get a B-Bad website soon, is in development. Is that right? You said the other day? Yeah, You're that's the... right. We've got a lot of things on, on the pipeline. At the moment, it's basically, because we're, we're all a volunteer outfit, none of us make any money at the moment. If anything, I'm losing money. I'm losing money left, right and centre for this. We're basically trying to get a, a website off the ground. We got a first sponsor today. Uh, I can't uh, disclose who for uh, no. at the moment, obviously. But we got a first sponsor today, which really made me quite happy. Um, and you know, once we've got a website off the ground, uh, we, we certainly want to do some more work with uh, with, you got, with yourself. You know, uh, CA UK and yep. Combat Media and uh, uh, Cage uh, Amateur uh, Cage Amateurs UK. You know. All these kind of groups, they're fantastic groups. I can learn so much off them, you know, because they're, they're such amazing groups to, to uh, sorry, websites to, to get your daily news on, basically. Oh, yeah, this is the same. I think for a lot of us and a lot of our friends, we put it's love that we put into this and money, and you don't get much in return. But, you know, eventually hard work pays off, doesn't it, mate? Yeah, it does, mate. It does, um, yeah. Obviously, is there anyone you'd like to thank for helping you in Bay Bad? And, like, obviously, your missus is putting a lot well, of work in. There, there is there is one person who one hundred percent would like to thank, and uh, and it's not just because I'm the luckiest man in the world going out of there, but that's uh, Claire Monaghan. Yeah. Uh, she puts yeah she puts more work in um, than anyone I know to be honest with you. And yeah, Claire, I would say for a start off, Claire Monaghan. And then obviously, you know, you've got all the rest of the crew. You know, you've got uh, Wayne Llewellyn, you've got um, 
uh, of course, Dale, Brendan Hyde, absolutely fantastic guy. You know, Dale, uh, Dale um, he's, he's one of our closest kind of uh, boys. He's, he's going to be refereeing, actually, on the 27th. Uh, he is a fighter for us, but he's not fighting on the 27th. He's actually doing a book at the moment. Um, and uh, Wayne, he does most of our artwork, Wayne Llewellyn. Um, and then we've got other people, as, you know, there's a whole list of people, you know, I mean, obviously Tyrell Monaghan, Paddy Monaghan. You've, you've really caught me one, mate. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Hawkins, uh, you know, the, the list was on me. Um, but uh, Stevie Chief. Yeah. Basically, we all work together. And I'm sure someone's going to say, why didn't you fucking say my name? But, you know, that, that's. I've got too much brain damage, I reckon. <laughs> um, and eventually, what I've spoken to you about before is obviously um, fighters will have to start getting sponsors and that when it's mainstream. Is that something you're looking into as well? Yeah, mate. At the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a very fair man, and uh, if people if people are willing to sponsor us and uh, or invest in us, you know, and and basically help us, uh, we will cert- we are certainly very loyal. And just because we get big. We're not going to suddenly uh, throw, you know, just saying we, we become a very big outfit. We, we're not going to throw them in the bin and, and look for someone bigger. No. You know, uh, the one thing is uh, we, we will hopefully help them grow as well. If they, if they were, anyone who's willing to help us at the start, um, the one thing I do believe in is uh, is love, loyalty and respect, mate. And without that, you've got fuck all. You know, yeah. you've got to look after them who look after you. So, Andy, just quickly before we finish, how can people get tickets for Be Bad? And where is it? Right. If you if you want tickets for the show, um, basically, I'm sure that they can contact yourself. I'm sure you, you can yep, put one to no me. No problem. Um, but uh, basically, if they uh, if they go to myself, Andy Topless, um, or if they type in uh, BK, yeah, BK Bad at Facebook groups dot com or Bare Knuckles, Broken Knuckles, and Dust Ups Lounge. Um, you certainly will be able to get tickets from us, and uh, one of one of the admin or myself, you know, uh, will definitely uh, will definitely sort you out. And the other thing as well, if you ever join, you know, if you do join our group, uh, the one thing is you'll you'll always get a warm welcome. And every single person I try anyway, that every person who ever joins our group, I will try and personally welcome them to the group. And um, and we've got a fantastic bunch of people on there. You know, it really touches my heart how much effort, you know, and, and loyal some of, some of our members are. Brilliant. Um, and quickly, how's, is Paddy all right? How's he doing? Yeah, Paddy's all right. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the, the man never, ever stops, uh, you know, ceased to amaze me, really. It, 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 it's unbelievable, really, that only uh, five months to four months ago, I would come with Claire... And uh, and of course all the the Monaghan family would be there. It was really sad time looking at Paddy, and, and really he had. I'm not just saying this. He had like a five percent chance of living. It, it was so small. The doctors actually uh, actually asked Tyrone uh, to come over from Ireland, thinking that you know his final hours was there. And uh, and, and Tyrone blessing was over, you know, like that. You couldn't get a better son even if you tried. And the family was there, and and you looked at Paddy, and you just thought he, he's a goner. And then the guy never seen he, the guy never seems to amaze me. Paddy was just straight, you know. Now he actually looks more healthy than he's ever looked healthy. Well, I've seen him, if you know what I mean. Uh, for a long time, he left it like that. He's now uh, doing exercises every day. He's walking. He's talking very well. Um, he's the true champion that we all know, and the, and he is the miracle man. He, Paddy Monahan is a fighter full and through, whether it's through the heart or through the body. And even if his body can't fight, he, he can fight in his mind. Yeah. Some great stuff with him, of Muhammad Ali, stories like that. And there's some brilliant... Um... Oh, it's amazing. It's absolutely... It, it really is. You, you can't get a man like Paddy with a life like that. I know a lot of people always, you know, I've noticed really, uh, a lot of people always just come down to the fact that he knows Muhammad Ali. Yeah, and um, there's there's so much more to to uh, Paddy Monaghan than just Muhammad Ali, and and that's and that's only saying because you know Muhammad Ali is fantastic, you know to know. Yeah, there is so much more about Paddy Monaghan, which is is a miracle in its own right. You know, I mean, yeah. the amount of guys he knows, you know, he's at, uh, you know, he, the guys are even at the crazy funeral. You know, 
He knows more people than anyone I know, uh, and he has more respect from people than anyone I know. And um, he's done he's done a tremendous amount of things. You know, he's in the Guinness Book of Records. He's he's, he's the world champion bare boxer. He's he basically made it so that Muhammad Ali could fight again and get his license to fight in this country. Who else do we know who can do that? Oh, incredible story. The Rough Diamond is that. That's, is that what his nickname was, the Rough Diamond? Yeah, yeah, I believe so, yeah. Um, yeah, well, it was. I say believe so. You know, uh, I'm always careful, you know, if I'm commenting on somebody else. Uh, but at the end of the day, yeah, yeah, he was uh, the Rough Diamond. And uh, and I believe, you know, at the moment, I think uh, Tyrone uh, Monaghan and, uh, and Paddy Monaghan and, and the family, you know, that they're, uh, there's a film coming out uh, of the Rough Diamond. And uh, it's definitely a film. My God, is it a film what is going to be, hit the box office? Uh, it's doing really well at the moment. And uh, and at the moment, the Rough Diamond film, um, I can't say too much really about it. But the only thing I can say um, is that it is now in its final stages of actually get, becoming now a film. And, um, and what I know of with the actors who are going to be in it and so forth, I don't know. It's going to be an amazing film. It's going to be an amazing film. Brilliant. We look forward to that one. Um, yeah. The belt. Who's fighting for the BKB belt? Is that um, Andy and... Yeah, that's it. it's nice just to be able to actually finally have a bare-knuckle boxing belt. I you like know, that. And it's, and it's B-Bad as well. B-Bad, and I'm very proud of it. Brilliant. So you're going to get one that one of them for all the weight divisions that you're going to have? Well, at the moment, um, um, on the 27th, we've got... Um, Paul Pestle and uh, Dave Radford. Now, uh, Paul Pestle is, uh, is uh, again, he's, uh, he's a well-known MMA fighter. And uh, Dave Radford, he's an extremely well-known uh, bare-knuckle fighter. And uh, Dave Radford, uh, he's, fought, uh, he's fought in my shows before. He's never lost either. And uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, well... The proof's in the pudding, basically. He's a very, very talented fighter, and and he's been on the BKB circuit uh, even when I was on, even when I was a fight. Uh, obviously, he's older than me, actually. But when I was fighting, I knew of Dave Bradford. Yeah. So Never had the privilege of fighting him, but I knew him. A lot of experience, then, yeah. <laughs> he's got a hell of a lot of experience, yeah. And, and these guys are the type you want on the shows, really. The guys with experience, the experienced well, names. Well, that's right. But well, um, going back to what I was saying a minute ago. Um, Paul Pestle and Dave Rutherford, they're fighting for a shield. Now they're fighting for, you know, we was on about the Silverado League. Yep. They're actually fighting for the, because at the end of the day, it's like anything. You have to start from somewhere and then you have to make a goal for people to fight for. It's exactly the same as the belt. Okay, the two people are fighting for the UK belt. They, they are just getting that chance to be the first ones to fight for it. Yep. Once they've done that, then other fighters can then go and fight for them. Now, Ian, Ian uh, Hawkins, a uh, fantastic MMA fighter again. Uh, you know, he's got a heart of gold. And I think he's going to do very, very well at BKB. Again, because he doesn't like the groundwork, he likes toe-to-toe stand-up fighting. Yeah. Now, he's fighting. Whoever wins out of Andy Illaus and um, Carl Thompson, uh, he, uh, Ian Hawkins is set to fight the winner in February. Yep. So that's already a big, you know, big news event. Now, um, Dave Radford and Paul Pestle, they're fighting for the League Shield, the, the Silverado title shield, yep. um, which, which has also been made. Uh, it's good, that's going to be picked up next week. So this, like I say, yeah, we, we are going to get belts and shields made for the different leagues. So you obviously, Andy, you're investing a lot of money into this. I'm trying to try my hardest, and uh, you know, it, it's something I'm passionate about because uh, you know we're, we're not troublemakers. If anything, uh, we 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 do it because we we love BKB, and uh, and we don't get involved in politics one iota. Can't be bothered with politics, you know. Uh, just just want to just want to see uh, BKB do well, and that's it. Brilliant. Well, Andy, you've been a great guest. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to talk to you properly at long last. Yeah, it's always good. To, well, we had a big, co- we had a, we had quite a good conversation on the phone, didn't we? That yeah, time? yeah, that was brilliant. With and um, Paddy was there as well. Um, is Paddy going to yeah. be at the uh, at the show? Yeah, he's going to be there. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, Paddy's going to be. I mean, obviously, you know, like anything. Uh, obviously, if something was, you know, if it, 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 with with health and what have you, if anything comes yep. up, his health comes before anything. Uh, but yes, um, it's all set that Paddy's actually going to hand over the belt to the winner. Yep. And um, to from one from one BKB champion, former BKB champion, to the new uh, UK BKB champion. So. Uh, yeah, he's going to be doing that. Brilliant. It sounds like it's going to be a really good night, and I can't wait to see the first uh, BKB show that the, the police have sanctioned. Yeah, well, it's, it's the second. Um, as I said before, it's not a... Sta- no, you must you must understand this. It's not yeah. a sanctioned fight yet. No. Okay? You must understand that. We are going to be sanctioned. We are yeah. trying to get it sanctioned. Right. Yeah. The difference is it is not illegal now. Right? No. We're that's that's a big difference. You know, so, yeah. it, it's no different than a white collar fight. You know, white collar white collar fighting. Uh, it's not as you know. It happens up and down the country. Yeah. But it can be stopped still, and it can go on still, and you know, it can be frowned on by the the council, as long you know, as long as basically as uh, you stick to certain guidelines. We're doing it for a charity as well. Uh, we're doing it for help the heroes. The British Legion. British Legion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, guidelines are there. Um, you know, we're doing what we can, and uh, and like with anything, with any pioneer in any sport, you have to take risks and you have to go. You know, you just gotta, you just gotta go in things. If you're scared all your life and you don't do things, you'll never do it. No. And uh, one other thing, while I think of it, obviously, there's bound to be some sort of place. Uh, presence there, undercover maybe. Do you think just to watch, keep an eye on things that are going? Wouldn't surprise me at all, me old mate. Wouldn't surprise me at all. But good luck to them, really. You know, um, at the end of the day, we're going to try and put on a responsible and uh, and happy show, a happy show. And and the most important thing is the fighters' well-being. And uh, and and really, we we'll go from there. To be honest with you, and hopefully, you know, well, there's no hopefully about it. Uh, February, uh, the uh, whoever wins this title will be fighting again. And so, any other people, MMA fighters, boxers, or anything like that that are listening to this show, are they welcome to come to BKB if they fancy a go? Without a doubt, absolutely without a doubt. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, the one thing about BKB is uh, the only kind of fighter what can't really come and fight for us. Uh, is is a fighter who only uses his legs. As long as you can use these two bad boys here, then you're more than welcome to come and fight uh, in, in in any of our leagues. Excellent. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you, Andy, the Be Bad group on Facebook is the place. Without a doubt, mate. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, as I say, it's uh, bare knuckles, broken knuckles, and dust ups lounge. Um, and uh, and, and obviously, if you do have difficulties uh, getting onto that. Just, uh, just uh, befriend me, Andy Topliff, and uh, and I'll uh, and I'll put you in the group personally. Brilliant, Andy. Thanks a lot for coming on. Yep, no problem, mate. And I'll see you on the 27th. Yeah, that's fantastic, mate. I'm Brilliant. Looking Take care Bye. of yourself, mate, and I'll speak to you on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you. Mate. Thanks, Bye. mate. Bye. There you go, guys. That's Andy Topliff interview. What a great interview it was. I know there's probably doubters about BKB and stuff out there, but MMA was pretty much in the same boat 10, 15 years ago. And Dave O'Donnell, you know, he, he took it to where it is now. So good luck to Andy, and we'll be following him closely. Uh, now I'm just going to run through a few of the shows that are coming up. We have got, on October the 20th, a uh, boxing show, Tiger Bengal Promotions, which is run by a good friend of mine, Walid Ali. Uh, to get that is in the Walter Lilly Mile End Road in London. To get tickets for that, uh, www.ukbu.org. Uh, next show, big show, uh, Full Contact Contender. You can go to their website, full con- uh, Full Contact cont- uh, Contender.co.uk, and that is at the Reebok Stadium in Bolton. Uh, the next one, obviously the guy we just spoke to is Andy, the Bare Knuckle Show, that's on the 27th, if you want tickets for that, get in touch with Andy, or obviously get in touch with me, 
Then after that, on November the 11th, a local one for us, we have got the Massive Open, which is run by Leo Alderman. Leo Alderman's on Facebook. The best way for that one is contact him. That's for all the young fighters. That is a really good place to go and see the young stars of MMA, K1, kickboxing, everything. These guys know how to put on a show. Sunday, November the 18th, the biggest ever heavyweight rematch in the history of British heavyweight MMA is Tomaz and Hawkins. We spoke to both guys, we've been on an, in on this from day one. Daniel Moverhady, matchmaker, Stephen Doran, promoter, what a great couple of guys. I mean, their show is just growing bigger and bigger. It's at the Coronet Theatre, uh, 28 New Road, London, but... New Year, hopefully we're going to get this event back at the O2 where it belongs. Guys, the Coronet's a great, great little venue. Please get along and see Ian and Tomaz because this is going to be a battle. Ian's been training, Tomaz has been training really, really hard. It's going to be a great night, guys, so please, you can get tickets, cageamateursuk.com. We've got ads all over the site for these tickets, so please get on the site and get tickets because this is a night that's not going to be missed. On Friday, November the 30th, uh, there's a fight night in Didcot Town Football Club, uh, Beaumont Water, Didcot, OX117GA. Uh, for tickets for this, prizefighters at hotmail.co.uk. And then Saturday, December the 8th, a good old friend Paul Saunders with his rematch against Tomas. This is in Hastings at the Summerfields Leisure Centre, Bohemia Road. TN3 1ET and then after that we've got the South East Amateur MMA League I'm not too sure about this one I'm not uh, I know it's to do with Stephen Doran a good friend of mine you can contact Stephen on 07584 052 520 or Stephen again is on Facebook uh, under Fury or contact Dan Moverhady these guys are more than willing to help. I'm, like I say, we're not too sure about what this is, but it's a league, guys. So, I mean, a league is something that everyone can get in, work their way up. You know, it gives, it gives fighters a bit of stability and it gives them a name. Uh, and that's it, really, for the up-and-coming shows. I mean, most of them we will be at, so please come over and say hello to us if you are there. Uh, BKB we're recording, Walid Ali we're also recording, and DVDs will be available. Fury MMA, again, we're recording that. The Massive Open we're recording. All these fights will be on our YouTube channel, bar BKB and Walid Ali. They are going to be DVDs. We're not sure on the price yet, but it'll be around £10 with your delivery. And Walid Ali uh, Promotions, what a great boxing show that is. And obviously... Uh, They'll all be on our on our website. If you want to know anything about Fury MMA, get on cageamateursuk.com. And that's where it's at, basically. Guys, this has been our first show. I hope you've liked it. Um, we're going to get this stigma with this Real Combat Media out of the way. And obviously, we're looking for guests. So anyone who wants to appear on the show, please get in contact with me or John. That's me signing off. Take care, guys. We'll see you on the next show.